Hey everyone, welcome into another episode of Tivoli Zoo. This is episode 10, and as usual, we're starting off where we left off, uh, which was this coastal entry area, which is a secondary entrance into the zoo, um, as well as a polar bear exhibit and an implied sea lion and seal exhibit. So um, in today's episode, we've got some stuff to finish up here, and I really need to get into this backstage area. We need to, to polish off the exhibits here. Um, and just in general, I kind of need to go around and do some of... Um, you know some of the work that that I've been putting off like this infrastructure work so finish this parking lot over here um, maybe work on this main avenue a little bit up here and then like I said the backstage area and stuff um, because in the next episode I want to work on the tropical discovery which is the tropical house in the Denver Zoo and it sits right about there so um, I'm hoping to get all of this wrapped up so that we can move on to that and then I think at that point, the zoo itself will be about about halfway done, I think. Um, so we're starting to um, get to a, a good turning point. Okay, so before moving forward with, uh, with the rest of the coastal exhibit, I decided to go ahead and finish this up over here. Uh, this gift shop interior is something I've been putting off for a while. In the last episode, I was able to clean up the, the glass pieces because they finally gave us those scenery objects in the game. Um, but the, there was still a ton of work to do on the interior. And after completing this interior, which we'll go into in a second, it looks kind of weird to have open interiors here with the glass and then just sort of a fake exterior here so i went ahead and made an interior for the uh the welcome center as well unfortunately i can't do that for the ticket booth because i actually have a hidden ticket booth inside and the the building itself those little cubes that they give you for the the various shops just don't uh lend themselves really to doing um interiors so um so that's unfortunate but there is now an interior here and an interior here so let's go ahead and uh and head in um one thing that i really was kind of a glaring issue for me anyway was the doors that i had there previously they just didn't look right they didn't blend in with the uh the, the glass facade here so um was able to get something that's not super complex but i think sells the idea of uh doors that you would pull open and then as we go in so we've got our ATM machines here, we've got some brochures, and all of this stuff is pretty much uh, things I've taken off the workshop, so I will put links to the descriptions in those. I'm trying to be better about uh, shouting out the stuff people do in the actual videos. Um, this is one that unfortunately I didn't write down, but I will include a link uh, of that in the video. It's hard to remember every single thing that I've used uh, before recording, but um, a lot of these little things, the odds and ends, um, if you just search like gift shop on the workshop, you're going to find them. So these shirts are uh, from a creator called Valley Lou, and basically they made these things here, and I just took the little shirts and then uh, put them on these circular clothing racks and then these ones here. So I made those racks, but the shirts I, I snagged just from this blueprint here. And uh, I used these two to hide the those little cubes like I was talking about with the ticket booth. So there's actually a poor worker back here uh, behind the wall, but I wanted it to look like you would actually come up to, to this um, register here to buy whatever souvenirs you were purchasing instead of having the little hole in the wall where, where the people walk up to so um, one thing that it's probably never going to happen in the game but a couple things that i would love to see um, in terms of like the shop ideas is one that sells uh like plush stuffed animals that's something that i've always seen at least in, in american zoos i'm not sure about in europe but in american zoos that's a huge money maker i mean kids will i mean parents spend a fortune on those things they're like they're so expensive inside the zoo um but it of course after going and looking at the animals 
you know, kids are going to going to want to take home, a, you know, stuffed version of whatever their favorite animal was. So that's something that I think in addition to the hats um, and maybe instead of the balloons would be a better a better choice uh, for the game. So hopefully we get something like that in a future update. Yeah, in addition to that, something that's probably never going to happen is um, in Parkitect, they have instead of a big cube like that, they have a little basically a booth. And all the booths are the same, so you can customize the scenery of the booth, um, but it doesn't have a big cube around it, and it has a little drop-down menu that you can choose what it sells. Um, so something like that, again, I, I'm sure pro we probably won't ever get it, but in maybe future games, if there's ever a Planet Coaster 2 or um, a Planet Zoo 2, something like that would be um, very welcome, I think, for a lot of people. So. Uh, but anyway, like I said, a lot of these odds and ends are from the workshop. Um, I'm trying to think here. I'm trying to, to look at my list here. Um, so a lot of these accessories like this stuff here and then some of these things are from uh, a creator called Plastic Swan. And I also have some things in here from Eben, who has been on a couple of the recent episodes of Kuali Zoo. Um, so these are from uh, Quali Zoo, which he put on his workshop. Uh, same thing with this here. But um, like I said, I'll put all the links to the description in, in the um, uh, links to, in the description of the video. There we go. Uh, and then these are for Mr. Domez. We've highlighted a lot of his work here uh, in mostly backstage stuff, but his stuff is super detailed, looks really good. So we've just got some pamphlets and things like that. Um, some items that you can purchase up at the cash register here. Uh, and then the thing that I'm probably most pleased with how, how it turned out in here is this ceiling. Um, especially these dormers, these were incredibly difficult to do, uh, especially carrying these lines down and, and underneath here. The one thing that I'm a little bit bummed about is I had to overlap some of those glass pieces so you do get a kind of a little, uh, you know, weird geometric shape there when you're up close. But uh, when you come outside and look back at it, it's not noticeable at all. So just one of those things where, um, you know, in the game, not everything is necessarily going to be perfect the way you exactly want it, but you just have to kind of work within the constraints of the game. Uh, so yeah, that interior really pleased with how it turned out. So we'll come across here to the, uh, the Tivoli Zoo Welcome Center. So this would be like a place where you could get information about membership or if you were a special guest of the zoo, you would come here or just wanted general information about uh, maybe volunteering. Things like that would all take place here. And then uh, we've still got our, our staff rest area, uh, a couple of workshops there. And then as you go back through these doors, there's like research and... Uh, which I didn't didn't do the interiors for for this, but you come back in here and there's research. Which the thing that I like about this is you see it from uh, from the exterior of the zoo. Um, and then, like I said, no interior here, but I did make it at least feasible that you would walk through this corridor here to get out into the welcome center if you were working the ticket booth that day. Um, a lot of these items are from. Uh, this, I believe, the, the water cooler is from Eben as well. Uh, this is from Zekin. He did a whole like office set. Same thing with these little computer screens and these chairs and the desks. Um, he, uh, he did like a whole architectural build, which I will link uh, to in the description of the video as well. But it's really, really well done. Um, and then he was kind enough to let me use these before he even had them on his workshop. But um, I, I think they're, you know, they're nothing um, too piece count heavy, which is nice, but they really sell the idea of some nice furniture in this little lobby area here, as well as the, the planters. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with how this turned out. I think um, it's very convincing for what, what the purpose is, and it's nice to have just another interior especially since it looks so weird not having one uh with, with the gift shop across here but it's really satisfying when you do interiors to to look out the windows and uh you know see the people walking by same thing here you know just looking looking at the light shining through uh and, and looking out into the the main entrance plaza area and the parking lot and all that stuff is just really really satisfying 
All right, so there's some things here that I needed to tidy up in this entrance area, mainly getting actual entrance gates in. You know, there is a way for you to enter in through these main doors here and have your ticket taken and all that stuff, but I still needed a general entrance and exit area. Um, something too that I just realized I'm gonna have to figure out is this, uh, the master plan calls for a parking garage under this facility, which is right here. So I did put in a parking garage, but there's also a elevator and stairwell that I need to put in right here for people to access this little plaza entry. So that's something that I'm going to have to figure out. I, I'm not sure that might have to be a part of the next episode because I'm going to put in the tropical discovery right here and I need to make sure that, uh, that I basically lay that all out correctly and still have room for, uh, for that stairwell and elevator. So, um, I'll, I'll figure that out later, but uh, really pleased with, with this entrance area. I basically mimicked what's on the other side um, in the original entrance. Just a simple, small gate area. Um, I did find these awesome doors. I guess they're sliding gates from um, uh, Moblung, uh, his workshop, which there's several doors that are available in, in this one blueprint, which you'll find in the description. Uh, and these are exactly what you see in a lot of these types of entrances where this thing slides down and then locks into place. So those are, are just really, really well done. I mean, even you come on the inside here and there's little motors and stuff to lift the gate open and, uh, little switches. So, um, really helps sell the realism. Another thing I realized about this building in general is that it snows in Colorado and, these types of roofs, snow and ice, would just slide right off. So uh, I put in these little nubs here, which help hold the snow up on the roof um, so that it can melt and just water comes off instead of uh, huge sheets of snow and ice. And I uh, did the same thing over here as well. And then on the other side of the, the building where it goes into the exhibit area. Um, so yeah, if we come in here, I tidied up the doors. Those were a little off last time. And a huge thank you to, to Carlos. I've referenced him a few times. Uh, very talented creator, has lots of great um, workshop items. He was kind enough to uh, change this skeleton for me. So I just found the, the whale skeleton on the workshop in the last episode, but I was pretty sure it was like uh, a humpback whale or something like that. And he was kind enough to change the skull and the tail on this thing so that it's actually an orca skeleton now, uh, which fits in much better with the overall theme of this area. So um, Carlos, thank you so much. It looks so cool. And I think uh, it's just sort of the, the cherry on top of this building here. Um, so yeah, continuing to work on getting this, uh, this exhibit in order. One thing that I found really inspirational was looking at the, the Arctic Circle exhibit at the Detroit Zoo. It's a really, really fantastic exhibit where um, it's not nothing like I'm going to lay out here, but it, it gives the illusion that like the polar bears and the seals are all in the same area and they could, you know, that they're, they have a, this glass wall that makes it look like the water's all connected and that the polar bears could get to the seals if they wanted. Um, and they, they have an area that's like Arctic tundra and then they have an area that's a lot of like fake ice and snow and... Uh, and rock and things like that. So I want to try to mimic that a little bit in this polar bear habitat. Um, let's see, what else did I work on tidying up here? So yeah, put in, put in doors in the front here, which were much needed. Um, have this sort of grand staircase down into the zoo. So if you were, um, you know, in a wheelchair or something like that, you would just have to enter in through this building here and then uh, could take this ramp down to, to this lower level. Um, started working on laying out the polar bear habitat over here and getting these bridges in place. So these things were a giant pain, uh, especially working with the water. So you can see I've, on this one, I've got a wall here and a wall here. So the water does not connect underneath. Um, this one, the water does connect underneath. And what I learned the hard way is that this bridge being as low as it is, you cannot um, adjust the pathing when the water's in place. So you have to, or sorry, other way around. You can't do the water when this path is in place, but you can adjust the path 
when the water's there, if that makes sense. So if I were to remove this water right now um, and then try to add it back in, it would not get added back in. I would have to delete the bridge, add the water, and then rebuild the bridge. So um, the, the water in the game continues to be difficult. I know that they had to do it um, you know, the way that they did so that the animals would interact with it and swim around on, on top of it. Hopefully with whatever they, however they coded this and however they designed it, hopefully the, they'll figure out a way to actually make animals who swim, um, swim in the water. Um, so this right here is gonna be the, the little polar bear experience area where you can pay, you know, for an extra uh, experience ticket and you can actually come and swim down here. Um, it's nothing too deep. I mean, even the, the concept art doesn't look like it's more anything more than like waist high on an adult. Um, and this one's even more shallow, which would be for like really little kids over here. Um, so we'll make sure this is all themed up and everything. Uh, we've also got in our, our uh, sort of barn for the polar bears, another viewing area here, which would be sort of like an education satellite and then same thing there will be an underwater viewing here as well as the uh the underwater viewing here which apparently people are coming down here to view to view the polar bears all the way over there so that's awesome <laughs> um also been working on the the backstage here but i think i'm going to save that for the end as just sort of a, a final reveal all right so i think we're going to be at the final update of this episode here you know i'm sorry i know i usually show more sort of progress as we go along i just got into a groove and, and i think we're at a good point now where we can basically get into the tropical discovery in the next episode um so we're a bit of the ways outside of the zoo here this is a, a blueprint item from a creator called silent member who is a, a member of the bro nation discord very talented uh, and I think he has since moved moved on from Planet Zoo and back to Planet Coaster. Um, but this was something I think he made early on when it, the game first came out. And it just shows you the level of detail that, uh, that people are capable of with this game. I mean, just look at these gas pumps. I mean, those things look completely believable. Even the, the ice machine, or the, not ice machine, but the ice storage over here. And then he's got all this clutter in the windows, I mean, just completely sells the idea of a gas station over here on this corner. Um, so thank you so much, Silent, for this blueprint. Again, I'll link this to, in the description below for anyone who, uh, who wants to add this to their project. Um, but if we pan around here, you're going to see we've basically gotten this main avenue finished up to this corner. You can see some little uh, details back in the parking lot over here, but the biggest reveal is the skyline. Um, so these three towers are the three tallest towers in Denver. Um, these were made for me by Eben. Again, the uh, has been on the most recent episodes of Kowali Zoo. Uh, incredibly talented. I have no idea how he made these so quickly for me. Um, you know, these things would have taken me a long, long time to do. So thank you so much. You saved me so much time. Um, he also made these over here, which uh, are basically just two of the same tower, but these are condominiums that are right off of City Park in Denver. Um, on the back side of the of the Denver Zoo and then you know in real life these would be much more in the distance they'd probably be like over here but much further away um, obviously I don't have a map size large enough so um, you know we're just gonna kind of have them in the background of the zoo over here but um, from from this area down here looks really really good um, this is a Dairy Queen blueprint from Mr. Domez who again we've mentioned uh, a few times another really talented creator um, he he tends to I think do details really really well I mean like even little um, you know descriptions here and the benches I mean these are like exactly what you see in these older Dairy Queens um, and I, I wanted this to look like it had been there for a long time so we've got like weeds and stuff poking through the the parking lot um, but, uh, again, thank you, Mr. Domez, for all of your contributions to, to the workshop as well. Um, maybe someday we'll do an episode where we just highlight blueprints because there's a ton of amazing stuff on the, the workshop and, um, a lot of it, I don't think, uh, ever makes it to the front page, unfortunately. So, 
Uh, as we make our way down this avenue here, you can see the secondary entrance building, which one of the things in the uh, the master plan description says that it, that calls for this building to be iconic architecture visible from outside of the zoo. So I think uh, we checked that box pretty well here. Okay, let's head down this road here and all of this stuff will get cleaned up. This is sort of my blueprint graveyard right now. Uh, in real life, this is a golf course, so we'll, you know, we'll paint the terrain and, and adjust the terrain to kind of make it look like that uh, at some point. But um, let's go ahead and turn into the zoo parking lot. So we've got some public bus drop off here uh, and I've hidden a zoo entrance and ticket booth inside a, of this uh, blueprint so that people come off the bus and into the zoo and then exit on the bus as well. Um, found these amazing school buses on the workshop. I didn't write down who created these unfortunately but I'll, I'll put them in the, the description below. Um, I think I'm actually, because there's so many, I think I'm going to just create a list. I think you can do that, um, create like a collection and I'll put that down there. But, um, you know, from, from afar, these things are great. They look really, really good. You get up a close, you know, the, the tires I think are the most notable thing that's kind of off cause just cause they're art shapes, but, um, he's even got the little lift here for wheelchairs. Um, they just look fantastic. They're the perfect encapsulation of, of like an American school bus. Um, so you've got school bus parking back here, your regular parking all up in this area. Um, so this road here will go all the way around the exterior of the zoo and into, into city park. Um, and just really satisfied with this whole, whole view here with the city in the background. Um, this entrance building, the, the plaza now landscaped all the way. You know, if you step off one of these buses, Let's see if we can get someone to to come in. I think the zoo's at full capacity. I've I've limited how many people can come in, so we might might not be fortunate enough to get somebody unless someone just did. No. Um, okay, so let's walk into the zoo here, and we'll after we're done in this uh, camera angle, we'll uh, we'll do an aerial overview as well. So you come down here. You can either get your tickets or if you already have tickets on your phone, um, you can just head down into the entrance if you want or if you want to come into the interior here, you can also have your tickets taken inside. Again, I put a little handicap sign there because um, if you're in a wheelchair, you need to enter in this way to utilize the, the wheelchair ramp outside here. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with uh, with how all of this turned out. Most of this hasn't changed. So let's, and actually there's not really anything to see over there. So let's just go ahead and come down the stairs here, uh, which have added railings and all that. Um, same thing over here, you've got railings. And then let's come over here. So one thing that has changed is I put in these, uh, these sunshades. I actually went to the Denver Zoo um, before recording this and one thing I noticed in their sea lion exhibit was these uh, these big sun sunshades that were set up um, wherever they do the the animal shows and things like that so I've added them here you've got them on the the seal exhibit over there as well and then I have got a couple uh, up in the uh, the polar bear habitat so you kind of see where we're walking here so admittedly, this is not uh, completely done. So this would be the, the seal habitat. And I kind of phoned it in, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> um, so I still need to do, I still need to do more work here to make it look believable and realistic. But uh, I just, I didn't have it in me to mess around with this bridge again uh, for like the fourth time and try to mess with the water level. So I will, I will get to that, but um, unfortunately it didn't make it in, in this episode. Um, I think I'm going to adjust the time of day here. Get a little more sunshine. Okay. All right, so we come this way. I want to start up here, actually. So again, this is an, an education satellite. You can see the, the polar bears from over here. This is supposed to be more like a, a tundra type area in the spring or the summer. 
Um, and come in here, get a great view of the polar bear, um, even into the rest of the exhibit here. And one thing that I, I wanted to do was put across this gate here. Um, I know that one thing I remember as a kid, the, the Denver Zoo had two polar bear cubs one time, and I remember going and seeing them, and they, the two of them were with their mom separated from the male. And so I wanted to have that as an option where, um, you know, the, they're not going to have access to, to this area or this area if they needed to separate them from, you know, a, a cub and, and the, the mom uh, from the, the male. So um, that's what that's supposed to be. Again, this is your little polar bear experience where you can swim with the polar bears. We've got uh, the larger pool here. Just got some nice uh, sun cover as well as you're walking through this corridor here. And come down this way. And this is probably my favorite part of, of this exhibit. Um, you know, it really sells the idea that you're kind of in the Arctic, which I've always found these things to be weird because, you know, usually you're at the zoo in the summertime and it's really warm and then you see all this fake ice and snow and stuff. But it, it helps because you see the animal and what kind of would be their their natural habitat. Um, so, again, we've got some sunshade here for the polar bears to keep them cooler. Uh, and I think my favorite thing about how this turned out is you've got... You've got a lot of theming, so you've got the rocks and the snow and stuff, but then you still got those hints that just sort of break that immersion that you're, you know, and remind you that you're in a zoo, which is pretty typical of most exhibits. Uh, so you've got your entry into the, the backstage there, and then your, uh, your closing gate into the, uh, the barn for the, the polar bears. And then if we head down here, you get some underwater viewing. Now, I would like these to be shallower. I just kind of ran out of room and, um, you know, these are some pretty monster stairs to get underneath here and, and view the polar bears underwater. But it was something that I wanted to include. It is listed as something in the, in the master plan. So nothing too spectacular about that. Just a simple cover. Same thing over here uh, where you can come down and get another, another underwater view of the, the sea lions. And this is, you know, this isn't really the main underwater viewing area. That's all over there. But it's just another opportunity to see them under under the water. Um, so yeah, I think that's the bulk of the exhibit here now done. Uh, let's sneak through this way. So this whole thing needs to still be worked out a little bit. Um, the interior where where the polar bears are kept. I need to adjust these fences and and added some more details um, but frankly I don't really know much about the the backstage stuff and I couldn't really find a lot of of uh, you know images or video for for inspiration or resources so um, this is kind of gonna have to wait for a bit here but if we sneak out this door so this would be something where they could remove uh, the polar bears from here, if they needed to, they would obviously probably be in a crate or be tranquilized or something like that, but um, or sedated, I should say. Uh, but it allows them to to get the animals out. They could also remove the animal from the main uh, the main yard as well. But um, I just wanted to have multiple ways for them to accomplish that. Uh, so if you remember, this gate goes out to that main entry plaza. Um, and then this is the back side of the, the gift shop and there would be like offices and oh, that's something that I actually forgot to show. Um, so this is just sort of a restroom and first aid area over here. Um, nothing very detailed. I just kind of needed to cover up the facilities, but um, it gives you an idea of, of it being completed. And then up here would be like offices and things like that. Um, so yeah, as we come back around the, to the, this side of the gift shop, we've got um, a door here, garage door that can be opened up into storage room. Um, and I tried to just put as much clutter as I could in this back area to make it feel like it's, it's been lived in. Um, you know, I've got trash cans and boxes and carts and animal transportation. Um, this is by this one and this one are by uh, Palsley which again, I'll, I'll include a, a link to. And then these two, 
I believe are by, uh, gosh. I want to say Carlos, I think. Um, I'm sorry, I can't. I, I thought I had them all written down, but I, I didn't write that one down. Uh, but again, they just add to, to sort of the vibe that this is a, a used area by the zoo and, and something um, that's got a lot of activity and, and clutter in. So that's access into the main yard where they could, you know, carry in dirt or things like that. Uh, and then this water treatment facility, I did not make, but it's incredibly well done. This is by a creator called Nightbringer. And I think I've seen it in a couple other people's zoos, um, so you may already be aware of it, but uh, it's just really, really well done. I mean, it, for those of you who followed um, a lot of the, the Planet Coaster series that uh, are kind of in our community, you'll know Wings and Strings, and he made this incredible pump system for this Water Rapids ride. And this is on that same level. I mean, the, the detail here is really well done. You've got bolts and... And everything tying this all together so I don't have any any clue how any of this functions or if it's realistic on that front but um, it certainly sells the idea that you would need a massive water treatment for uh, the huge sea lion and sea seal pool as well as the uh, the polar bear pool so um, back here you've got uh, a holding area for any of the seals or sea lions that you wouldn't have in the exhibit um, there would also be, in the master plan, it shows an underground holding area as well. So basically everything under the, the polar bear habitat would actually be habitable um, or an in interior for zookeepers. Uh, I didn't do that. I may, I will do that if and when we get uh, sea lions in the game that actually, uh, you know, are actually possible to be in the exhibit. Um, if we get that, I will definitely add an interior down there and redo some of the terrain and all that so that um, so basically the, the zookeepers can access that door on the stage to put the seal the seals or sea lions into the exhibit. Um, so coming down here, you've got uh, just a cargo drop off for the quick service restaurant that's in this building and then the, the ticket booths and offices that are inside here. Um, and this is actually uh, functioning, which is nice because the staff use this whole uh, pathway to kind of um, make their way through the zoo. And nothing detailed back here, obviously. Um, I, I don't really feel like doing an interior there and I don't really think it's necessary. So uh, yeah, that is the uh, the overview. Let's go ahead and hop out into... Um, the aerial view here so you can still see lots to be done something i forgot to show is just a little simple baseball diamond here that's what's uh, actually here in real life is uh, a couple baseball fields so um which is nice because it fills up a lot of space and i don't have to spend a ton of time landscaping it so that was perfect for uh for what i needed um so yeah again there will be a golf course here all along this whole area i'm gonna build up the hills so that you kind of can't really see off into uh, this area where you're not allowed to edit edit the terrain. Um, here in real life on this boulevard, there's a bunch of houses that line this side. So I'm gonna put in some of those and it'll kind of help hide. Hopefully it'll make it look like you can, you know, drive into the neighborhoods off of this main road. I'll have several streets that kind of go into, into this, what would be a neighborhood. Um, and then over here, this is the road that borders the exterior of the zoo and then this area is going to be where our tropical discovery is going to go um, but if we look at our backstage and everything i'm really really satisfied with how all this turned out i mean i think it looks realistic from from the peak view but then when you really expand out and look down on the zoo um, i kind of i feel like it looks like a, a satellite image um, so we've got our, our parking lot here. We've got our, our two sort of entrances into the zoo um, or into the zoo parking lot, I should say. And then we've got our, our two entrances into the zoo itself. So uh, yeah, that is, uh, that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, I would have liked to, I think, tidied up more than I did, but this kind of work here, like you can see, I need to, this is a slope, so I need to, to 
angle these lines down here and need to put in turn lanes and all that kind of stuff. There's only so much of that you can do in any given episode because it's pretty tedious work and, you know, the end result is worth it, but not necessarily the, the most fun thing in the world to do. So, um, yeah, in the next episode, we will get to work on the Tropical Discovery. I hope to do the exterior and all of the internal exhibits. Um, there should be... In real life, it has howler monkeys, but we don't have that in the game, so I'm going to do the capuchin monkeys, and then we'll have the gharials, um, komodo dragons, and then uh, just a bunch of the um, the little cube exhibits in there with like insects and snakes and frogs and things like that. So really looking forward to uh, to getting into that, especially because I'll be able to utilize a lot of the, the tropical foliage that I really haven't been able to uh, up until now. So... Um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate you um, being patient in between episodes. Uh, you know, I'm just slowly but surely plugging away at this thing. And, uh, and yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys in episode 11. Thanks.